In this video, I'm going over how not to break Debian. Now, I was originally gonna do an install video and I'm still going to do that, but I needed to say this first. If you're doing any kind of Debian work, you need to know these things or know not to do these things. So I'm about to jump into all the things. I got another email follow-up from Sebastian. I thought, you know, this would be perfect for a follow-up video on things not to do in Debian because most of my configuration stream, there was some very good things I did, but also some bad things I did. And I wanted to go over what those things are. I also wanted to touch on some of the things during the install process I could have done better. And if you're thinking about installing, you could do those. Now, I will include this into a complete wrap up of a full installation, but some things I wanted to get out of the way and correct some of the statements I made during my live stream where I might have said some things about sudo or the actual APT package manager, mainly just from ignorance of not knowing some of these tidbits. So I'm about to share those with you right now. I'm going to go over to my top screen and show you the sources list, how to curate it, how to properly maintain it, and then also kind of show you how to properly set up sudo. Because as you saw in the install video, I actually directly edited sudo as much like you do in Arch or many, pretty much any Linux instance or distribution. However, in this one, there's a much easier way with Debian that I missed and it actually said it plain as day in the screenshot that I'm about to provide. So another thing about the install, I'll probably actually include this during my actual install, what I'm going to do here in a couple days, but um, sudo during the install, how not to break it. You saw me edit the sudoers file and some people can really mess up your installation when doing edits to the sudoers file. Uh, Kevin C here, uh, I went ahead and redacted the names and email addresses out of here, but he sent me this email and I thought it was very good and I wanted to show it real fast in this video. It basically says, hey, you just zero out your root password, just don't put anything, and then the actual user you create will have pseudo privileges automatically. This makes entirely all the sense in the world to me why Debian out of the box kind of sucks because you're always putting a root password and then another password for your user. A lot of times people are just putting the same. Well, that's not the way to do it. The best way to do it is just leave root blank and root will be disabled and it'll also give your user the opportunity out of the box to use the sudo command. It's often overlooked and Kevin sent me this email. So big shout out, thank you, Kevin. Uh, I think this is just fantastic and I wanted to include it in this, how not to break your Debian install. So the main thing about Debian that we absolutely have to fix is our sources list. So let's go ahead and pull this up. I wanted to kind of show you what my sources list is so you have a good understanding of what you need to do with your sources list. So let's just do a cat and list out our sources. So APT sources list. In here, you, you'll see in all my repositories that all of them say Debian. It's the biggest thing here. If it says Ubuntu or something like that, that will not work. Now, not only Debian, but it'll say uh, Debian stretch, which is Debian 9, or it'll say Debian Buster, which Buster is Debian 10, or will be Debian 10 when it finally gets released in the next couple months. So there's certain things in here, such as my next cloud client is actually nine because there is no 10 yet. There will be, but there isn't yet. So if you had problems with this, you'd want to remove this repository and use a flat pack or a snap. So it really just depends on if I have issues with any of these. If I do have issues with any of these specific pieces of software, I will remove these unofficial repositories that don't have a buster yet. And then I will be using snaps, flat packs, and app images because those are all contained and aren't reliant on certain dependencies. So this is where everyone messes up and where I personally messed up because of 
several misconceptions I've already gone over. So you have your sources.list, but you also have your sources.list.d. So if you add any crazy repositories, like if you were on that live stream I did, you'll see that I did a ton of different repositories that just aren't any good. So let's go into that directory and do a listing. So we'll just ls etc apt sources list.d. And from here, you'll see these files. These are what I currently have. And if you have a question of what each one is or what is in them, uh, the dot saves more of a backup. So you don't have to pay much attention to that from my understanding. So let's say I wanted to know what the Lutris dot list is. Um, I, I'm just going to do another cat and type in that. And you'll see right here, this is actually using Debian 9. Again, if I had issues with Lutris, I know, hey, Lutris isn't gonna work properly in Buster just yet until they actually release a Debian 10 version and then I can update my repos, clean it, and then do the full update and it would be completely fine and be sanctioned for this version of Debian. But this is how people mess up with APT. Everyone wants the functionality of like Arch where you just type in APT install and then your package. Well, it, it doesn't work quite like that. You have to set up your repositories. But the nice thing about APT and why I like it better than your Arch or Pacmans or uh, the AUR is it's stable. Once you have the proper repositories and you go to install something, you're guaranteed it's going to work every time. You know, you're not going to run into an Anchorman situation like you do in Arch where it works every time, 50% of the time. It just always works. So that's why people love Debian and how to properly do the repositories. Okay, so as far as making sure which package gets installed with which repo, it's really important. Like I messed up during mine install or adding sources and repositories that I shouldn't have added. So to remedy this, I removed them and I cleaned the cache and then I redid the update and everything was great, right? Well, a lot of times you install a package during that period and that package can break your system. It can do all kinds of bad things. So for me, I did a time shift package and I was like, crap, did I install that through the repo or did it get installed by this other repo? Because sometimes these packages are multiple ones. So Let's go ahead and switch and kind of just see which repo was the actual one that we needed. So if we look here on APT cache and go show package time shift, you can actually see the repo under versions and look under descriptive language as well. And you can see, hey, it's pulling from Debian.org and it's from the Buster's main repository, which is what we want. This is the right repository, which is fantastic. This is a good way of checking your packages. So if you're unsure where a package came from or you're having problems with a specific program, go to that program, do the show package under APT cache. Now, if you did it through a Debian package that you downloaded, you can also use D package and I believe it's a cache or show and you can actually see where that DEB package came from it as well. So there's ways to trace these any any which way you 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 splice it so uh, very important when you have issues with programs check this out so that's how not to break your debian install i think so many people jump into debian much like i did and just took some very bad assumptions and put them into practice because most people start on ubuntu or linux mint and you develop bad habits in when you transition to Debian. You think of Debian much like Ubuntu, and the thing that needs to be said here is Debian is not Ubuntu. Ubuntu repos do not work on it, and it will break Debian, because there's some liberties Canonical has taken that just don't work on Debian. You, you've gotta remember Ubuntu is a completely modified version of Debian, where Ubuntu might be able to borrow from some Debian repos, but uh, Debian cannot borrow from Ubuntu repos. Very important to know, thing that I missed completely in here, and also like PPAs, that is an Ubuntu thing, not a Debian thing. These things are just assumptions that I've made and they're completely incorrect. So very good. I really appreciate Sebastian following up, giving me a second email here 
and definitely worthy of this video because these assumptions, I think I'm not the only one in thinking, hey, this is okay to do, especially in the live stream chat. I think there was about 100 to 300 people somewhere in there, depending on the time you jumped in that literally nobody jumped in chat and said, hey, don't do Ubuntu repos, or there might have been one or two people, but I was unable to actually see it in chat just because of all the scrolling. Most people are like, oh, hey, you just need to fix your keys, or you need to add this PPA. And I think there's only a couple people that mentioned that uh, you don't use PPAs in Debian. And after some research and looking through these emails, I kind of figured that out as well. And a big shout out to Sebastian again for just, you know, say, hey, idiot don't do that <laughs> you do it like this and i really appreciate that that's a, a huge thing and then also kevin showing me that little trick with sudo because it didn't make any sense to me like out of the box debian you couldn't use sudo with your user i was like what is the deal with this and the reason being is i didn't read that little tidbit on the actual setup install screen that just says hey if you want to use sudo with your user which i think everyone does so that screen probably shouldn't exist um, but I see why they did it and blanking out that password in root just solved everything. So very cool things. I hope you guys gleam a lot of things about this and I look forward to making the full on Debian install video. I'm hoping to get that up later this week and I might take a couple days to do it just because that is going to be a little bit more production quality that's going to go into that video to where I really want it to be very seamless and have uh, all my I's dotted and all my T's crossed for that video as uh, Debian has a lot of little things that just little gotchas that I want to make sure I don't fall into, especially when I go to make a video that people can use in the future, especially for uh, Debian 10 Buster. So with that said, guys, if you like this video, consider visiting me on Patreon and I'll see you in the next one.